Hi, my name is Pete Scully. I'm the principal here at Thomas Worthington, and I'm really excited to welcome you to our building. Uh, today's recording is intended to be a refresher from what we talked about at Curriculum Night, or if you are unable to attend, a way for you to get the information that we had that you may have missed. Um, first and foremost, I want to say welcome to the class of 2027. Uh, obviously, this night is for all of our grade levels who are continuing at Thomas, but it's especially geared toward our new families and our incoming ninth graders to introduce you to our school, what we have to offer, and uh, what the next four years holds for you. I'm going to start with some introductions. So um, I'll start with our administrative team. That's me on the upper left. On the upper right is our athletic director, Ms. Fiesler. Ms. Greenwald, Mr. Keenan, Dr. Carr, and Mr. Schaefer are, are all assistant principals. Um, and you see the letters underneath their name, A through D, E through K, L through R, S through Z. Those would be the last names of families. So if your last name is Scully, for example, you'd have Mr. Schaefer because he covers students with the last names S through Z. So our assistant principals are typically involved when um, you might have an issue that is difficult to resolve uh, at the teacher or counselor level, or uh, you may just need some guidance and you're not sure who to reach out to, and they're always a great place to start. So um, don't ever feel like you can't reach out and call if you have a question. That's exactly what we're here for. So. Uh, oftentimes counselors are a, pl a place where parents start. Assistant principals can also be a place as well. Our student support team consists of uh, Mr. Gordon, our Dean of Students. Uh, he's often involved when there are kind of low-level disciplinary issues or um, he's also our camera guy. So if sometimes kids will lose AirPods or a phone and um, they often go to Mr. Gordon for help. He's uh, he, All 90 of our cameras he's able to to navigate really cleanly and easily. So he's, he's kind of known for that. Ms. Starks is a counselor who doesn't specifically have kids assigned. She's here part-time uh, to help out and um, she's a friendly face who can definitely help you with how, how Thomas Worthington operates. Um, and Mr. Baker is our attendance monitor. So uh, if you have an attendance issue, he uh, Ms. Nunez would be probably the person you call on a daily basis. becomes to be a bigger issue, Mr. Baker would probably be the one that would be working with you on on resolving that issue. So those are three faces to know. Our school counseling team consists of uh, Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Swearingen, Mrs. Price, Mr. Court, and Mrs. Burns. And you'll notice that same thing after their name, A through D, E through K. Um, so again, this is based on family last name. And occasionally we have some shifting in that alphabet. Uh, but when you get your schedule um, on Infinite Campus, school counselor is always listed on there. So. Um, this would be your, your first point of contact. So if you were, had questions about scheduling or concerns about class placement, whether or not your child was in the right classes or eligibility for athletics or, or even like an initial teacher level issue, counseling team is a great place to start. Uh, they often, they know our teachers really well. They know our courses really well. Um, and they're often uh, experts in the field that, that can really help you kind of figure out what the next step is. Just a really brief overview, overview, and I'm, I will tell you that there will be a session on this uh, as well. So in, in tonight at Curriculum Night, we will have an entire session dedicated to graduation requirements. Um, you know, when we think about graduation, we often think about uh, doing well in school. And so certainly that still matters in Ohio. So you have a certain number of credits that you must have in order to graduate. Those are still there. Um, and so when you see Cover Basics, it's kind of what you think of probably when you went to school, um, you know, pass four units of math, so four year-long math classes, four year-long English classes, three year-long social studies classes, three year-long science classes, a unit of health and a unit of physical education, and then five elective credits. Um, so that would be things like art and our family and consumer sciences and business, things like that. Um, and then the second the second way to demonstrate competency is demonstrating competent competency. So on top of grades, you have to have either a minimum score on Math 1 and English 2 um, or another way to demonstrate competency. So enlisting in the military, a career technical education certificate, successfully completing um, College Credit Plus, or doing having a remediation free score on ACT or ACT or SAT would be a way to demonstrate competency. And then, then the third is showing readiness. And um, these are kind of new. They're graduation seals. And we have several that are, that are driven and described by the state. Um, and then we have a few that are local. Um, and like I said, there will be more information to come on this as we go. 
um, but many of those seals are rooted in test scores. So um, other, outside of math and English, you still have biology, American history, government, things like that. If you score well enough, you may end up earning a seal. Sometimes they're related to how engaged you are in the school or community service. Um, so you must earn at least two seals, one state and one local, um, in order to graduate. If you're wondering kind of what things typically look like for ninth graders uh, in their 9 through 12 curricular experience, I'm showing you the core, so math, English, social studies, science. And if you were to take the minimum, so we need four years of math, four years of English, three years of social studies, three years of science, um, some of it's already kind of prescribed. So the nice thing about going into ninth grade is uh, you, you have a lot of your path already set for you and you really have a chance to get your feet wet and explore a little bit and decide what you want to do. Um, and so if you're coming in from math, most of our students come in in either math two or math one. So if you've taken math one in middle school, you typically come in in honors math two. Um, if you have not, if you were in math eight, uh, you're typically coming in taking math one. Um, and so you need four years. So most of our students have math one, math two, uh, a math three of some sort, that could be quantitative reasoning, and then a senior level math course. So that could be um, calculus, uh, could end up being uh, financial algebra or transitions to college math. So we have a bunch of options once we get past the first few levels. Um, English is kind of the same way. So you have ELA 1, ELA 2, ELA 3. Um, if you are in honors, by the time you get done with the sophomore year, your options kind of head to the AP range or the elective range. So um, a lot of our juniors take AP language uh, composition, for example. Um, there's also an AP uh, English literature, um, and then there are a bunch of other senior, junior and senior electives for English that are available after the first and second year. Um, social studies, our kids typically take modern world history, and then their sophomore year they take American history. Um, kind of the honors course would be AP U.S. history in the sophomore year, uh, and then government is a junior level class required for graduation. Uh, with a state test attached. So state tests are attached to the American history uh, course and the government course that are, are tested here in Ohio. Um, and then science. Our, our freshmen typically come in taking physical science or honors physical science. Our sophomores are taking honors or regular biology. And then we have AP options um, in biology, physics, chemistry, and the list goes on. We also have college credit plus options. So really your first couple years in all content areas are fairly prescribed and then um, you have some options that open up as you're when you're a juniors and seniors. Here are examples of electives that are available to ninth graders. So um, we'll have a couple slots on your schedule that you could uh, request electives. And so you see our business courses, our family and consumer science courses, obviously world language. So most kids take Spanish, French, or Latin. Um, and then we have some, some tech courses, music, uh, choir, band, orchestra are all very popular. Theater, art, wellness, um, you get the idea. There's there's a lot to choose from. In fact, there's so much to choose from you can't do it all. So that's probably the hardest part about high school. You have a lot more options, but you have to start making decisions on where your strengths are and what you, what you want to do. Here's an example of a, a typical ninth grade schedule. So they'd have an English, a math, a social studies, a science, a lunch, um, and then and then attached to lunch, uh, you have three choices really. You can have an academic prep, which is kind of what you'd expect. So you'd have 25 minutes of lunch, 25 minutes of a quiet study hall. Um, you can go to the Ox Gym. So it's a large space. If you're social or want to get out some physical activity, that would be the place to go. So you'd go from lunch to that kind of physical activity space. Um, if you're really worried about courses, like let's say you have filled every other uh, block on your schedule and you really want to get work done, you can take what's called a full lunch prep. So for the full lunch period, that 45 minute period, uh, you are in a study hall, a silent study hall working and eating your lunch. Those are those are your three options. Um, and so, so typically then a kid would have uh, a few electives, often, like I said, a world language elective, sometimes a music, sometimes a wellness or something like that. Um, so that gives you a general flavor for what the schedule looks like. I will tell you that um, this school is pretty big. We have about 1,800 kids here this year. Uh, we do expect that to go down a little bit in the next few years, uh, but we're, we're going to be around 17 or 1,800 uh, pretty indefinitely. Uh, that's the plan and the likely um, occurrence that's going to happen. And sometimes those 
those spaces aren't always the best for everybody. And um, I want to make you aware of a couple options that are pretty popular that we have here in Worthington. One is Linworth Experiential Program. Um, they boast having a smaller size. Uh, there's actually some student ownership in the in the running of the building. So they have regular town hall meetings where they openly discuss issues with the school and ways to resolve those issues. Um, if you're interested in taking a peek at Linworth, they have a, a an open house on February 1st. So that'll be Wednesday, February 1st from 7 to 830. One of their programs that they talk about often is this program called Walkabout. And so in a typical senior year, um, at, at a traditional school, you are here your entire senior year. Uh, when you work through Linworth and you go on walkabout, you have first semester very traditionally finishing up all your graduation requirements. Second semester is literally a full semester internship. And um, they have staff to help get those set up. And those can happen locally. Um, and there are plenty of cool opportunities locally. And they also have a history of happening all over the place. So, um, you know, in six of the continents, uh, and there are some pretty interesting locations that are listed up there, obviously major cities and all over the, all over the country. Um, so if you're interested in looking at Linworth, uh, typically our Linworth kids have a portion of their day at Linworth and a portion of the day at the traditional school. So sports, co-curriculars, all those things that, you know, kids often want to do at the traditional school still happen at their home high school. Um, and then their core classes typically then would happen at Linworth. Uh, another small setting, a little different, is called Worthington Academy. Worthington Academy is blended learning. What does that mean? It means that you have a content area teacher in the space, uh, but kids are working on their own at their own pace online. Um, and so it's a smaller environment. There is, there is a certified teacher in each of the content areas offering support and teaching, um, but kids are actually completing at their own pace online. Um, a typical Worthington Academy day would look like a half-day Worthington Academy uh, which is located in the Perry Phoenix building on Snoffer Road. Um, so they'd go there either in the morning or the afternoon on a shuttle. And then uh, in the morning or afternoon when they don't, they don't have Worthington Academy, they'd be at their traditional high school doing electives and other things that they need to do that are not the core content. So they work on math, English, social studies, and science at the academy and their electives and non-core content at the home high school. Um, if you're interested in athletics, this QR code here with a dinosaur on it actually has all the contact information for head coaches of our sports. We have 32 varsity sports. Um, you can reach out to them. They're also great at advertising when their open gyms are and when things like that are happening Rachel. on social media. So I would encourage you to reach out to coaches to get make contact if you're interested in um, playing the sport or doing a co-curricular. Uh, there are links here for a registration letter and registration card. Um, those will also be going home through the middle school. I uh, want to highlight one more time, uh, when you're choosing which lunch you want, you'll see that our first choice is that full period lunch academic, uh, full period academic prep lunch. That second box is half lunch, half ox gym. When you hear ox gym, you should think social and physical. Half lunch, half prep. When you hear lunch and prep, you should think Half of it is lunch, half of it is a study hall. Um, and then STEM lunch prep, if you're on the STEM team, you would choose that one. Um, that would be lunch. And then the prep is actually with a STEM teacher. So your next steps, pretty simple. Um, review the registration information. Fill out the registration card. Don't forget that there are two sides to it with your, your choices. Um, both middle school, all three middle schools will be visiting Thomas. So you'll see that we're planning on Phoenix and KMS on the 26th and Worthing Way on the 27th. Um, our middle school counselors will lead registration for the high schools at their middle schools uh, with support from the high school. Um, last but not least, go cards. As I said before, we're really excited to have you. Um, as a parent who has had a kid graduate from Thomas and I have another kid who's going to be a rising junior, I will tell you that there is always a little bit of nervousness about going from a small school to a bigger school. And that's, you know, rightfully so. It's a bigger place. You're worried about your kid getting lost, maybe not having the same level of personal attention. The one side effect of going to a larger space is that we have more people and we're still staffed with caring people. So we have a lot of caring people who are willing to go above and beyond and help make your child's experience as smooth as possible. So 
If you have any issues, please don't hesitate to reach out. If your kid's struggling or needs help or um, is, is confused or concerned or lost, please don't hesitate to reach out. We have people waiting and interested in helping. Um, hope you have a great night. Appreciate your time and attention. Thank you.